So welcome to the second episode of Ask the Football Gods. Yesterday, we asked about the Cowboys. Today, we're going to ask about the Atlanta Falcons. Yo, football gods, what are the Atlanta Falcons going to do this year? Hello? You going to tell me? You going you gonna to do something? Give me a sign or something? Huh? Well, at least give me a sign. No sign. Again, that's what the Atlanta Falcons are going to do. They're going to choke. I'm ready to go. Then, when it's all said and done, you're going to go to the diner and you're going to get a physical. You better get your prostate exam. Go get your prostate exam. No more waiting. Get it done. Oh, I'm not getting that done. I'm not getting that. I know. I'm not getting that. You're 42 years old. Get it done. Look at you. Look at you. Doing King Ding Bang here. So, Eagles practices for day two of training camp has come to an end. And as always, I want to talk to you about who I thought stood out. Now, this video is going to be heavy on the quarterbacks, and that is because Carson Wentz was a surgeon today. He was all over the place, he was putting balls in short, small windows, he was showing off his arm strength. They said he was even running around the pocket and looked really, really good. His recovery is unbelievable right now. It is unbelievable. And I say this because over the last few days on 97.5 The Fanatic, they've been having a debate on who should start week one. And I'm going to have to throw in my two cents on this because some of the things and some of the callers and some of the things I've heard, I just think are flat out wrong. The last two days, I've been in a car a lot. I've been listening to 97.5 and I've been listening to people call in and this whole argument on who should start week one. Now, there is a large group of people who think that no matter what, Nick Foles should start week one. They think Nick Foles should start week one and that Carson shouldn't come back until he's 120%, until he's 110%, you know what I mean? And to me, I gotta say, what the hell is that? What is 120%? There is no 120%, there is no 110%. You're either 100% or you're not. So I don't understand that talk. Now, I love Nick Foles. He is on my top 10 Eagles of all time list. I love the kid, okay? But he's not Carson Wentz. And in the group that doesn't think Carson should play, there is a smaller group who really want Nick Foles to take over. They want Nick Foles to be the starter. They want this to be his team. And that's what they want. And so they say, well, start Nick Foles the first three, four games, and then Carson can come back. And they know that if the Eagles start 3-4-0, and four and oh, it's going to be pretty hard to suddenly take Nick Foles out, essentially making Nick Foles the starting quarterback of the Eagles long term, and basically you're going to have to ship Carson Wentz off at that point. Why? Because Carson ain't going to stand for it. He's got a contract year coming. You understand what I'm saying? Now that's a small group of that group that want Nick Foles to play week one. Others just want to be cautious. They're just so scared that Carson Wentz may get hurt again. Okay, they're worried. They're looking at training camp. They're going, wow, this guy's really looking good. He's here really quick. Why are we rushing him? Why are we doing that? We shouldn't do it. Let him sit. And I get that. They want to be cautious. They want him to come back healthy. Okay, I get it. But the reality is if he's 100% and the doctors clear him, if he's ready to go and we sit him, then it's, it's not helping him anymore. He needs to be out there playing. That's why he's our quarterback. That's why we gave up all those picks, okay? Carson Wentz is a generational talent. He's a generational talent. And the last thing I want to do is have a quarterback controversy going into him negotiating a new contract. What if he gets offended? What if he's like, I don't need this. I'll go somewhere else. I'll, let, I'll just play my contract out. Then we're screwed. You don't want that. You got to take care of Carson Wentz. If he's ready to play, you play him. Okay? As far as like who's better, 
I mean, it's, it's Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz is the better quarterback. Nick Foles did a great, amazing thing. But Carson Wentz, he changed the thought pattern of this team. He let this team believe that they were that good. He did a lot for this team. And if Carson Wentz isn't on this team, I don't think we would have gotten to the Super Bowl. And Nick Foles, he did a great thing against Minnesota and, and the Patriots. He should be honored for it. But Carson Wentz is the future of this team. Let's not play around with our future. Let's make sure that when he's ready, he plays. And I got to say this. Carson isn't trying to rush back early like RG3. I believe that Doug Peterson will do the right thing. I believe the doctors will do the right thing. I believe Carson Wentz will do the right thing. Okay, If Carson is out there moving around, that's because that's where he is. If he wasn't able to do this, if it was too early, he wouldn't be doing it. Carson is doing what he's supposed to do. He's handling his recovery as it comes. Not everybody heals the same time. And if the doctors and the coaches say he can go out and practice, then I trust them. When they say he's 100%, I trust it. I'm not worried that he's rushing too early, you know, rushing back too early, and I think he's going to be fine. So that's my spiel on it. Carson Wentz, when he's ready, when he's 100%, 98%, 99%, you play him. And that's pretty much how I feel about it. As far it. as practice goes, today was a light day, no pads, no contact, and really the talk of the day that I heard was Carson Wentz looks fantastic and he was even running around showing his mobility and people said he looked really good. Nick Foles had a bad day. He struggled. Wasn't really too good today. His deep ball was really bad. But look, it's training camp. That's going to happen. Carson's going to have bad days. Nick's going to have bad days. It's just the way it goes. So Sudfeld had a really good day and we'll get into him in part four of my training camp preview which will be coming out this weekend. And um, you know, that's kind of the way it was for the quarterback situation. Um, Devontae Bosby on defense got some first team reps with Jalen Mills, Ronald Darby. Um, Sidney Jones was in there earlier at the slot, then Bosby came in. Um, so Bosby continues to impress as well. And I also heard that uh, Kruger Hill and Nelson both got some first team reps at linebacker. Maybe that's because Bradham's going to be suspended game one. Um, but I like Kruger Hill. I think he's very athletic, and I, I really want to see him this training camp. I really want to see what he has. Oh, and here was an interesting name that you wouldn't think of, you haven't heard me ever say. But Donnell Pumphrey had a good day. He actually had a good day. I mean, Deuce did nail into him at one point because of his route running. But overall, I heard he, he looks a lot more comfortable. Speed, agility's there, and he bulked up. And people said he doesn't look like, you know, like he doesn't know what's going on, which was a big problem last, you know, last preseason. So he looked good, and that's a good thing. I would love to see him show us something. I would love to see something from him. No doubt about it. You know, it would be great. I heard uh, I heard Greg Ward had a good day at practice, too. Um, Matt Collins got more reps in all Sean's place. Another good thing to report is I'm hearing great things about Nelson Aguilar. Now, Nelson Aguilar looks a lot more comfortable in that slot position this year than he did at the start of training camp last year, and he's also much more confident, and this is making him play a lot faster. Um, apparently, he burnt Ronald Darby today. Darby slipped. He got up. He thought he was going to catch Nelson Aguilar. Aguilar turned in another gears, and he, he couldn't catch him, and Darby is fast, and for Nelson Aguilar to outrun him, that's a great sign. I mean, we forget how explosive this guy is. He is very capable of becoming a big playmaker for the Eagles. That kind of guy that I talk about. The guy that can catch the ball at the five yard at the five yard line and then go 95 yards. That's the kind of guys we need on our offense. If we add that to this team, nobody can stop it. Nobody. But Aguilar looks really good and I'm very excited about him. So the last guy I want to talk about today is Cameron Johnston, the punter. Now I hate talking about a punter, but in this case, I think we have to because basically he's the only guy on the Eagles roster, and the first two days he's been struggling. 
He's been struggling, and it wouldn't surprise me if the Eagles bring in somebody else to compete against him because um, you can't just have one guy. you got to kind of push him. So expect the Eagles at some point probably to bring in another punter. But from what I heard the first few days, he's not been uh, too great. He's been kind of erratic. So expect maybe something to happen in that department. And that's pretty much it. For day two, um, I can't wait till the pads come on and that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, I will be putting out part three and part four of my Eagles uh, training camp preview. The next one will be the 53-man roster prediction followed by, you know, trades and stuff and basically training camp speculation. With that said, I hope everybody has a good night. Take care. Talk to you later. And don't be a dingbat.